We're going to start off with our character. We're going to add a walk cycle to this character. So first we're going to save our project as a new file. We're going to name it walk cycle. With all of my layers locked, I'm going to add a new layer. I'm going to call my layer guide. And I'm going to import to stage walk.gif from stewshare. And if I press enter, we'll see a guide that does a walk cycle. This is the traditional Preston Blair walk cycle animation. Now I'm going to unlock everything except for the guide layer. And I'm going to want each layer to be converted to a symbol. Right click on that, convert it to a symbol. That's going to be front arm. You'll notice that when you right click on it, convert to symbol is F8. Front leg. So now I can do body, F8, body, head, F8, head, back leg, F8, back leg, back arm, F8, back arm. Once all of my symbols are created, I can put a motion tween on each layer. I want them all to be the same length as my guide layer, so I'm going to highlight all of those by clicking the first and dragging down and inserting a frame so they're now all the same length as my guide layer. Now if I go to the free transform tool and I click on one of my symbols, so my leg, if I try and rotate it, it's going to rotate around that middle part, which looks bad. So instead, I'm going to move the transformation point to where it should be. So on his leg, it'd be his hip. That way, when it rotates, it looks like his leg is actually moving. So in each layer, I need to set that transformation point to approximately where I think it should be. So his shoulder, his body doesn't matter. His head should be his neck. His back leg should also be his hip. And his back arm should also be in the center of his torso. Then what I want to do is on each frame, match the pose that we have here. So we'll see that he's leaning forward. So I'm going to take everything except for his legs, move the transformation point down to his legs, right in the middle. And then I'm going to rotate his head and arms so that it's leaning forward, just like the character here. The back leg and front leg are both making contact with the ground. So I'm going to take my front leg and rotate it so it's meeting the ground. You might need to move it a little bit. Then the front arm is in the back. Let's rotate that around. Might need to reposition that just a little bit. Remember that the shoulder point should be halfway between the front and the back of the body. And then the back arm should be rotated forward. We're going to use the bottom of the stage as the guideline for our ground. Then I'm going to go to my next frame and I'm going to insert a keyframe for all. Then I'm going to set the next position. So his leg is not quite vertical, but it's more under him than it is in front of him. So I'm going to rotate that down. This leg is starting to come up just a little bit. My arm has just a slight gap between the arm and the body. And my front arm looks to be a little bit down from the front one. So it went down just a little bit. Then I'm going to select the whole thing and I'm going to nudge it up so that the foot is still on the ground. And since these are all motion tweens, I should now have a tween going from my first position to my second position. Then I'm going to insert keyframes on my next position and do it again. My legs should be straight up and down. The back leg should be a little bit up. The arm is now inside the body. Just behind the leg. This hand can barely be seen. And move it up so that his foot is touching the ground. New keyframes. Now he's basically straight lined up so I'm going to move this up to the angle of his body. His back foot is going to be the same. His arm lined up with those. We can see the hand here but 
because of Pooh's belly, it should probably actually be about here. Insert our next keyframe. Arm comes forward. Front leg moves back. Back leg comes forward. Our back arm, I'll have to click on it to select it, should be just barely visible. Select everything to move it down. Insert our keyframe for all of our positions. This leg is now at full extension. Our front leg is now in the rear, also at full extension, but it should line up with the other leg. This arm is as high as we want it to go. Same with the back arm at the highest point. Move him down, and we might need to adjust this a little bit so that all of our pieces match up. Insert another keyframe. Leg is down, leg is back. Arm here. Insert another keyframe. Leg is more lined up with the body. It's right about here. Front leg a little higher, back arm barely visible, front arm lower. Line them up with our ground. Another set of keyframes. Everything's lined up straight, so even with the body, even with the body. Bump my back leg up a little bit to match my front leg. This arm is probably not visible. This arm should be inside the body as well. Move him a notch down. And then we should be at our last guide frame. So insert a keyframe here. Move my arm back a little bit, leg up, leg down, back arm hand should be slightly visible. Now there's nothing to go from here back to the beginning, so I'm going to want to copy my first frame, paste it here, and then I'm going to insert frames here. Remember to set our keyframes for our very last frame. Arm back, this arm up, this leg forward, this leg slightly back. Nudge that down and adjust if I need to so that both legs are touching the ground. So we'll notice that in this first frame that the position changed, but the rest of it has stayed the same. And that is because when we dragged a box around the whole thing, it actually selected every frame. We need to highlight each set of frames individually just to change our vertical position. So I'm going to bump this up to the ground, highlight my next row, change that to the ground layer. I like that column and move it to the next column. The next column. Remember to just use your arrow keys so it doesn't move left or right any. And also make sure you do not select more than one frame like that. Highlight just the one frame. 
and then adjust. Our first frame should be really close to our last frame, and they seem to be close enough, but I don't want to actually repeat the last one, so I'm going to clear that keyframe. I'm going to insert a frame right before the last one, so I'm going to do insert a keyframe all, and that's going to be the tween position between this frame and the very first one. Now I don't actually need that last one because that should be the same as the first one, so I'm going to remove all of those frames, and then this is what I have. Once you think all of your positions look good, you can delete your guide layer and test what it looks like. Go to File, Publish Settings, hit your folder, make sure you rename this to Walk Cycle so that you do not overwrite your character on the website. Hit save, hit publish, go to Dreamweaver, refresh your file list, move your walk cycle over. If you put a space in your file name, it probably has the 20, which is the ASCII code for a space character. Save this file, upload your animate folder, and we'll check it on the website.